Naomi Season 1, part of the Wonder Comics imprint, aka the Brian Michael Bendis imprint. So this is cool because she's a brand new character completely. I thought that maybe Superman would play a part after the first issue. Not a raw, not really. He kind of is the spark to something that leads to something great. But him just being there is kind of... And it gets her to asking questions. When she was asking questions to D, and I'm going to do spoilers in this review. I'm going to do spoilers. I'll try maybe not to. But when when she went to D, there was times where I thought, okay, well, that's the parents. This is the path we're going down. And nah, when we get to D's part of it, that woman on that he had a picture of, well, she's long dead. And that was just a, a red herring. He's part of this Ran race versus the Thanagar, Thanagarian. That's Hawkman and Hawkgirls from Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, I know some of my DC shit. That's their race versus these guys. And uh, so was her, her her dad. And when they got to telling the story, the backstory of them, I thought first, well, this is a waste of time. Why are they spending so much time on her dad and his history? It actually made sense, man. Because this is world building for these six issues. They take care of this character. I know everything I need to know about Naomi. I know about her friends, Annabelle. I know about, they're all in the back right here. Look, look at this cast of characters. We met most of these friends just being silent. Uh, when she was camping, all at the bottom of the screen there. But they ha she has a cast. She has an interesting uh, a city in Oregon, in the Northwest. She, sh she has everything she needs. And an origin story, Her the foundation of her powers, is very DC. It's, it's the crisis on infinite Earths. It's, it is that. That's so smart. Uh, it's better than some alien coming and giving them a ring. It's... It's not a, not necessarily an orphan story. It is... I was trying to say it's not like Superman. Okay, it's sort of like Superman. But using universes and go, jumping from one to another and meeting... Um, what was her mom's friend name? Akira. She's trying to protect her. Go back and never return. And then she whoops uh, Zumbato. Zim Zum Duba. I, re I just read this yesterday. I'm sorry. I don't remember the name. But that villain, look. It set us up for a villain. We have our, mm, our main class. This guy was on the electric chair. And if the crisis hadn't happened and because... Radiations, you know, the the uh, the ozone layer layer is not what it used to be. That's interesting. So, so one of the Earths went down because of poor quality, poor uh, us not being economic, e ecologically. Well, it starts with the eco, eco economy. No, no, that's money. What's the word? No, we're not gonna. We're not, it's the ecology. I think I'm looking for ecology. So we're not taking care of the Earth. That's what I'm trying to say. But I sound stupid. So be I also didn't have my light on. I hope that was all recording with a uh, good lighting. So with D being what he is, super warrior, with her dad being a super warrior, and it's going to explain why she gets trained. And she inherently just she was born with more strength because both of her parents were part of the the twenty the twenty nine people who came out and said we were struck by the cosmic rays. They made an effort to say only twenty nine revealed themselves. They also said that half of them died, and they also said that like they somewhere in the future, let's say this character is going to go 80 years some writer some uncreated writer is going to say well you know there was another person who was also uh, born because because that's just how writers get people get uncreative peter parker has a sister called Teresa parker um iron man's got family arnold stark he's not even parents his parents aren't even howard and um maria like people get uncreative and people make stupid ideas like that so another naomi will come someone who was on that earth who was birthed by two parents who were touched by the light. That's how the radiation, that's how it's going to go. So he covered, Brian Michael Bendis covered his tracks. Similar to um, to Ironheart, how she has, and they're going to get compared like crazy. I sh I'm, so, I'm sorry that I did this. But he created that character with two parents, two dads. One of them died when before she was even born. And then one of them, you know, the adopted stepdad, and then he he died because he got shot by guns. So they both died by gun violence. But it turns out that the first one wasn't really dead. He he wrote the story of her parents that way for a reason. So that in 2019, E-Viewing could pick up on the story. Like, every writer is going to look at the origin of... Like, right now, with Fantastic Four. The first mission that they go on is being revisited by Dan Slott in 2019. He's writing a story of them. You know, let's complete that mission before we were hurt by those cosmic rays. Let's go back. That's what he's doing. So someone is going to revisit the origin of Naomi. And Brian Michael Bendis took care of it. It's not just him who wrote the book. It's our friend here. It's his name, David Walker. David F. Walker. 
in the back there's a story that by that Bendis lets us know about something he doesn't talk about, which is him on his deathbed. And I just know about it, but it's, it's not something I've really like looked into. I don't, and he, he he told me he does he never talks about it. All right, well, he, thank you for talking about it and letting me know that you had the ideas for this hero. And it's good that Brian Michael Bendis is doing it for the culture. Brian Michael Bendis is the man. I love his storytelling. I love how the second page is always a double page spread usually, and then uh, the the there's the the page turns where you have the suspense where you where you got the anticipation of thinking what could he be possibly talking about. He he's, he when the dad said to Naomi. That isn't the spaceship that you came out of. I'm like, what's he going to say? I can't believe it. I'm thinking, what? Well, how's he going to end this? Is he going to say he came out of the spaceship? No, nah, he wouldn't say that. What's he gonna... And then I turn the page and it's my spaceship. Oh, I'm actually from outer space. And I'm actually like the interest of the page turn was utilized many times in this comic book. Graphic novel. So I will give it its points. I'm interested in her. I'm not interested in the universe of DC, but I'll be there for season one, season two. And they didn't used to call it season one. I looked at the comic book cover of the first issue and it never says Naomi season one. I think because it became a thing, they're like, well, we might as well number them season one. Is it on the binder? No, they don't actually have the number on the binder, but it looks like we'll get season two. That's 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 the next hardcover I'm going to pick up from this. So it's a successful story. Man, it's and it's not dependent on the rest of DC. Yeah, we got our Thanagarian kind of tie in. Other than that, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, Thanagar. Other than them, Superman's barely in it. I know she was in Action Comics uh, 1014. Where is it right now? I don't have it. But I, I picked it up at the store when I after I got this. So she's 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 a unique, independent hero standing on her both of her legs. She has her cast. She's got two other super beings within her city. It's great. And I hope it succeeds. I hope Wonder Comics takes off. Bendis is the man. We'll leave the video. We'll end the video there. Thanks for watching this review of Naomi Season 1. Again, I'm not a DC guy, so if I sounded ignorant, I tried.